Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Welcome to another episode of The Dean Show, which is a way of life we try to put out there for everyone to see, helping you understand Islam and Muslims. I got a surprise for you today. Thank you for coming to the source to learn about Islam. Those of you that are already Muslims, I got a treat for you, a very special guest on The Dean Show. So we're going to take a break and bring out Dr. Sheikh Bilal Phillips. Sit tight, you don't want to go nowhere. Allah, there's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Allah, there's only one God. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. It's an honor to have you with us on the Dean Show. Thank you for coming on and being with us. My pleasure. You've been doing some great work, and, and, and uh, I'm only so happy to be a part of it, to share in some of the, the blessings that are there for you in getting this word out to the people. Thank you very much. So our primary message is Islam, calling the people to surrender and to submit to the creator of the heavens and earth and not his creation. And this is one of the most basic things that the people procrastinate with, finding out who their Lord is. And then even some who've found out who their Lord is, procrastinating on doing the good that he's invited them to do. We want to talk about this, Sheikh. What keeps people from doing and putting off? The majority of people you talk to, yeah, they know they got to change. They know they got to do good, but they don't do the good. Why is this, Sheikh? I would say probably the main reason is uh, laziness, you know, um, the, the reality of life usually doesn't sink in until tragedy comes, you know, this is when you find people, yeah, yeah, okay, tell me about it, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the way it usually is, isn't it? You know, if, because you're busy, you've got so many other things happening, you, you, you know, you don't really want to make that effort because it requires effort. You know, it just doesn't come. It's not a silver spoon feeding. No, you just, you have to go out and make an effort to get this knowledge. So people, you know, prefer to take it easy, you know, just take things as they go, you know, until calamity strikes. When that strikes, then you find them waking up and coming around and say, okay, let me see that book you were telling me about. Let me <laughs> yeah. get a tape. Let me see this. Can I, you know, give me something. I need something now. Reality is that they need it all along, you know, but there are too many distractions, you know, especially in life in the West, North America, you know, it's just, it's about distractions, isn't it? You know, that's the whole thing, the, the, the way by which you know, Satan just diverts people. That's basically what happened with Adam and Eve, isn't it? You mm -hmm. know, they were in a good situation. He comes now, distraction. You know, it's about the tree of life. Allah didn't call it that. But that was to catch their minds, get them off thinking about something else and getting, and then forgetting what was the original message. Don't eat from that tree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was the original message, you know. So that's what's happening in the life. People are not conscious of what's going on because they're so busy and distracted with other things. As, as Allah said in the Quran, talking about the compilation of wealth al hakumut takasu people are just caught up so much in gathering the wealth of this world they're lost as to really what the purpose of life is about you know they don't take that minute out to stop and think why am i here am i just like everybody else the other creatures the cows and the cattle the, the sheep and just eating procreating and then dying one day is that all? Is that all that life is about? So it's about, you know, trying to get people to stop for a minute and to think. You know, because once a person starts thinking, then hey, yeah, really, you know, they start to wake up. But the world, the way things are set up, keeps them too busy. How about now, you got somebody paying attention to us now, and he's thinking, you know what? When I die, I'll deal with it. When a calamity strikes, I'll deal with it. What's the dangers about this? Why should somebody, and what is the first thing that a person should really concentrate on? Well, and I'd say that, um, of course, it's always easy to say, when that happens, I'll deal with it, you know. But 
The reality is that when it happens, you can't deal with it. You end up not being able to cope. Well, sometimes it depends on what you've been doing in your life that when that calamity comes, you know, God does leave a door open for you. Other times, hey, you know, the kind of life you've been living, there isn't any door there. It comes and you see what happens to people when calamity strikes. They go mad. And are so mad, they're so, they're, they're, their values are so twisted and warped that they do all kinds of crazy things. I remember reading an article about a man, you know, this was during one of the um, uh, declines in the stock market. You know, this guy, there was a big drop in the U.S. The guy had $8 million invested. In a matter of hours, he lost like $5 million. Mm. That guy just lost it. He went and bought himself a clashing cove went into the sto stock you know the yeah. office and mowed down the manager and mowed down his his uh dealer and yeah and then turned the gun on himself and killed himself and the man had three million dollars still yeah he lost five that's a big loss but hey you got three million dollars you know so the whole perspectives are gone yeah so saying i'll deal with it when it comes don't be sure you're going to be able to deal with it that's that's fooling yourself Really, where do they start now? Okay, they say, well, where do I go? Okay, all, all the person knows is work, uh, relations with you know uh, his friends, wife, or illegitimate relationship with women, having a good time, entertainment. But you, we got their attention for now. Where, where should he start? What should he start doing first? Well, first and foremost, he needs to come to grips with God. That's the starting point. You know, do I believe in God? Of course, you say, yeah, I believe in God. You know, that's, that's the norm. Most people say, I believe in God. But the question is, do you really believe in God? Because if you believe in God, then you would be trying to find your purpose. Because the idea, and this is a common misconception, which again is an excuse, a way out. Yeah. People say, well, God made the world and you know, this world is too simplistic, too small, too insignificant for God to be busy himself with you and I. You know, who are we? Like ants, specks of dust, you know, in the universe. Yeah. So why would God bother himself with us? No, no. This, this is a nice cop-out, right? Yeah, there's a God, but he's not, busy, he's, he's not bothered about me and mm -hmm. my life. No. Well, the point is that once you say there is a God, then... That God, you must believe he's superior to you. If you think he's just like you and I, then, you know, no point carrying on the conversation. Yeah. Right? But if you understand what God is, who God is, in the sense of creator, sustainer of this whole universe, then you have to understand that wisdom is an absolute necessity. When we talk about understanding who God is, then we got to understand that he is ultimately wise. And now you, as a human being, right, if somebody said to you, listen, hey, you know, there's this man who set up a factory, produced certain goods, etc., and put an ad in the paper for people to come work in this factory, you know, and he invites them all down, hires them all up, and then he doesn't tell them what to do in the factory. He expects them to just go in the factory, do what they're supposed to do, and the factory runs fine, he's making his profits. No, they're going to go in there, and, you know, the guy hasn't told us what to do, let's go down to the cafeteria and drink <laughs> some coffee, have a chat, etc. You know, it's not going to work. And we would have to say, that is a dumb businessman. Yeah. That guy was a fool. A fool. An idiot. Yeah. You know? Why? So, if we can accept that on a human plane, that wisdom requires that you must inform those who you hire to do this job so that they can do it. Then surely the creator of this universe didn't create us and expect us to go find our way by ourselves without telling us what we're supposed to be doing in this life. He didn't leave us without informing us. So tell us now, what is the purpose of man's life? Why have we been 
what have we been created for? What have we been created to do? Uh, pile up wealth, have children, families. What is our purpose, Shaykh? Well, our purpose in life, as it's stated very clearly in the Quran, is to worship God. That's the fundamental purpose. Then this purpose is relative to ourselves, first and foremost, because God doesn't need our worship. He is Him. Himself. He's who he is. He is the creator, sustainer of the universe, whether we all worship or whether we don't worship. So the worship thing, in terms of purpose, is for ourselves. That worship enables us to reach the peak of humanity for which God created us, to be fulfilled in this world. That we utilize all of the abilities that God has given us in the best way possible. That we benefit others, we benefit ourselves, we benefit the world that we're in. You know, we're part of that beneficial process. That's, I mean, that's, that's where we're supposed to be. And worshiping God is what helps us to get there. Now, would a person be okay if he did his daily activities as he's doing and then you know what he agreed with you and he says okay I'll do the worship one day a week or one day a month or during Ramadan or if you're a Muslim is this what we're talking about no no I mean that's if, if it's not doing it as he has instructed five times a day so it's not according to my desires no if it's according to my desires then you're doing your own religion yeah. that's your own thing yeah. that's not God's <laughs> thing right God's thing has been quite clearly specified this is what he wants you know Ramadan fasting and again all of these things he wants from us for our betterment because he doesn't need it our fasting doesn't affect him it doesn't benefit him it benefits ourselves you know our giving of charity to the needy the poor it's for us it's for human beings our making Hajj commemorating Abraham's preparedness to sacrifice his own son at God's command that's all for us that's all for us. Uh, we benefit from it. So that purpose for ourselves, worshiping God, this is in order that we be the best that we can of humanity. Be the best human being we can. Fulfilling all of the potential that Allah has created us with. So now... For instance, someone agrees with you, just like with someone, you tell them, okay, they need to get fit, and you describe of how they need to work out, they need to, you know, lose a little body weight, but they need a system. Where is all this that you're talking about? How can someone achieve this without doing it according to his own desires? Well, this is what we said, that, you know, uh, a person has to take time and effort and investigate. Look at the various systems out there. See what they have to offer. See the rationale behind them. And I believe, you believe, that Islam is the answer. Islam is ready. We believe Islam is the right way, not just because we happen to be Muslims, you know, and so naturally you have your own bias for your thing, but because Islam has evidence for what it asks you to do. It makes sense. It's practical. It matches life. It's natural. As some people call it, the natural way. The natural way. That's it. It's natural. And that's what the Prophet said. Allah created every child in that natural way. But it's the environment, the parents, relatives, family that diverts the child from that natural way. So Islam brings people back to the natural way. If you are <clears throat> seeking the truth, what are some of the qualities that you should look for in one that is to be your creator? Because you have people that are claiming that this statue, this monkey, this cow, a man is God, what should the human being and how should he identify who his Lord is so then he can follow this plan and purpose that God Almighty the Creator has laid out for him? 
Well, of course, uh, knowing who God is, we, we know intrinsically inside of ourselves who God is. Uh, people might have convinced us that somehow God became these other things, you know, and God can be found within these other things. Yeah. But reality, inside ourselves, we know who God is. We know that God isn't born. Because if he's born, it means that there was a time when he wasn't. And then how does he get born? Yeah. Who brings him into this life? It has to be somebody else there to cause him to be. Then that person who caused him to be, or that being that caused him to be, is greater than he. He wasn't able to bring himself in. So, obviously that is superior. So therefore, when we talk about God, God can't be within the, uh, the world of beings that come into being. Beings that were not, and then they became. They didn't exist, and then they existed. Those beings cannot, God can't be found among those beings. He is obviously outside of that whole process of coming into being. God is, as the uh, basic characteristic is, the one before whom there was none. There was nothing before him. He's the first. The Alpha and the Omega. He's the last. There's nothing after him. He is without beginning, without end. He isn't born. He doesn't die. He doesn't have needs. So once you deal with a human being, he has needs. Jesus, for example, was circumcised on the seventh, eighth day. Or, you know, you don't go and circumcise God. You know, it's, not, it's, not, it's not common sense here, you know. And then, you know, he, he's drinking milk. You know, he's, he needs nappies. And hey, this is not God, you know. But, of course, what happens is that when people are raised in an environment of that thought, where, you know, you don't stop to think. I mean, when you, when you see, um, for example, Hindus and their rites of worship, when they worship their gods, right? There's a series of rituals that they do. Among the rituals is that they ring a bell mm -hmm. and wake up the god in the morning. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. wake him up. <laughs> and they shake him out and give him a bath and you know, set him in his place and you pour milk over his head and you put food in front of him. You know, people just do it. Because that's how it's always been done. They don't stop to think for a minute. Hey, you're waking up your God? I mean, he sleeps. He, he doesn't, doesn't know what's going on here. You have to wake him up in the morning. You know, It's just the same thing. You take a man as God. It's the same thing. This man was born and he died. You know, He had needs. He suffered. You know, this is not God. These are the creatures of God. So these attributes attributes we say of, of weakness or deficiencies etc these are not suitable to be attributed to God God is beyond all of that you know? so inside ourselves we do have an idea what makes sense relative to God we do have an idea but people due to how they're raised the information that they've been fed not hearing any alternatives you know, get used to certain practices and customs and beliefs and ideas. And um, you find them believing and doing the weirdest things. Yeah. You had mentioned uh, Jesus, peace be upon him. What do we actually, for the non-Muslims who actually heard you say Jesus and some people attribute him being God, what do we actually believe is, who is Jesus? Oh, well, we believe that Jesus was a messenger of God. And we worship the God of Jesus. You know, who Jesus worshipped. I mean, if you just stopped and thought for a minute, who was Jesus worshipping? Because it's recorded in the Gospels, you know, and despite all of the other issues about the Gospels, we put those aside, we just say it's mentioned there that Jesus worshipped God. So who was he worshipping? If he and God are one, then who was he worshipping? himself and you've got problems here yeah. it's, it's, it doesn't make sense and then the other thing when it comes to worshiping you know if you just stop